what's going on, guys. What you're looking at here is an image from space. This is a, a spacecraft that monitors solar flares and CMEs that are Earth-directed. This is the Earth right here. What you're looking at from October 7th, 8th, 9th, and then the 10th, the Earth was completely consumed by a comet tail. Did you see that? One more time. Here comes the comet as it's entering the inner solar system, being influenced by the mighty solar wind. That's what creates the tail. All comets are generally speaking the same, but they're all unique in their own way. We don't know what exact components are made up of every single comet that comes through the solar system, and they all don't behave like this. This one here was quite exceptional, visible in the daytime sky of Earth. Many people sent me hundreds of photos of this comet, but I want to talk about comet dust. Is comet dust poisonous? I've had a lot of people ask me that, and generally speaking, here's what we're looking at. Comet dust is not poisonous, but comets do contain gases that can be dangerous. Hydrogen cyanide, HCN, a highly poisonous gas that interferes with the body's ability to use oxygen. However, the amounts of HCN in comet tails are extremely low, that's in most cases. We don't know what all comets are made of. And diluted in space and Earth's atmosphere, making them harmless. So that said, that this stuff does make it to Earth's atmosphere, obviously, as we can tell by that video footage right there. And here's another one to consider. Cyanogen, a poisonous gas derived from HCN that smells like almonds and is colorless. It was detected in the tail of Halley's Comet in 1910 which led to a panic and the sale of comet pills. However, there were no detectable effects when Earth passed by the comet. By the comet, key word there. Not in the comet's tail like we're, we're seeing right here. Organic compounds. Comets contain a variety of organic compounds, including methanol, formaldehyde, ethanol, ethane, and amino acids. Comets emit dust and microparticles when they approach the sun, forming a tail. The dust tail is made up of tiny particles that reflect sunlight. Looks really white in this video footage. Again, this is the Stereo Ahead spacecraft. The sun's over here. That's the Earth right there. Here's a look at the comet going through the, the inner solar system via the SOHO LASCO C3 instrument. This monitors the sun directly. The Earth is back here. The solar wind blowing this direction. So the, the comet dust would have been blowing towards the Earth, just like we saw in the previous video footage. And again, this was a huge comet with a huge tail, many millions of miles long. And here's another video I put together for perspective purposes. Here's the comet. This is the Earth. And notice how the tail is starting to take on a sweeping motion towards the Earth. That's due to the solar wind right here blowing towards the Earth. It blows towards the Earth constantly. And when a comet comes between the Earth and the Sun, that tail is going to blow directly towards the Earth. And when a large comet enters the inner solar system near the Earth, the solar wind is going to blow the tail towards the Earth. We are right here. So all of these particulates in the tail of that comet, and you know there's trillions of, of particles in the tail of that comet, Earth was definitely in the middle of it. And here's some pictures of what the sky looked like, especially from the northern hemisphere, as the tail and the Earth were interacting with each other. These were some of the most impressive auroras I think I've ever seen. Personally, I received nearly 350 photos, very similar to the ones you just saw from a very impressive, one of the best I think we've seen in modern times, geomagnetic storm that again produced some of the most photogenic skies I think I've ever seen. There's another look at the comet from the SOHO LASCO C3 spacecraft. The sun is right here, the earth is back here, and then of course the massive comet tail that was many millions of miles long. So once again, the earth here recently was just engulfed in a massive comet tail. So if you felt maybe a little different here the last week to 10 days, it could have been from the comet going through the inner solar system, bringing in all of these dust particles from this ancient comet that's been traveling through space for probably billions of years. And again, all comets are primarily the same, made up of, of ice and things like that. But generally speaking, when comets get near the sun like this, they start to go sublime and all of the stuff on the, the head of the comet turns into a giant tail. And we don't know the exact composition of every single comet that comes through the inner solar system. We can kind of generalize, but to know the exact composition and the amount of various compounds 
in this comet and the tail that formed from the, the mighty solar wind at this point in time are a mystery, a complete unknown. But more than likely, some of those compounds made their way through the, the atmosphere of the Earth. Something else that influenced the Earth were the charged particles in the, in the tail of this comet. I don't think I've ever seen a geomagnetic storm produce this type of consistent auroras all around the, the northern and southern hemispheres of the Earth. These are just a few of the hundreds of examples that I've received from people all around the world on the night of October the 10th, shortly after the, the Earth went through the tail of the comet. And again, the tail also contains charged particles. You're looking at one of the strongest solar storms ever recorded back in 2003. This is the Halloween storm of 2003 recorded by the SOHO Lasco C3 instrument. And as you can clearly see, the Earth was overwhelmed with energy from that particular Earth-directed CME that produced a very strong proton storm. And if we go back in time over here at spaceweather.com, going back to October 31st of 2003, they talk about bright auroras. We'll even go back another day to October the 30th, checking out some of the aurora photos that were sent in following that very strong storm, a severe geomagnetic storm that was in progress from this activity right here that I just shared with you guys. The auroras weren't near as spectacular as what we saw back on October 10th of, of 2024. So that tells me that this comet more than likely had some sort of influence over the outbreak of auroras that we saw, once again, all around the world. Coming up, you're going to see the X flare that produced a proton storm right here as the comet was making its way through the solar system. That proton storm interacted with the Earth on October the 10th, and it wasn't nearly as strong as this one right here. But the auroras, once again, around the world were bright, colorful, and highly photogenic. Here's some more photos of the comet. Here's a video. And again, you're not seeing all of the activity that's up there. This is a video that was sent in out of Oakland, California by Tim from October 15th of 2024. Visible in the sky as the sun was dipping down below the horizon. You can see a lot of activity in the, the front and back of the comet. Again, this is just a, a time-lapse video from Oakland, California. Here's a few photos that were sent in. This one by Barbie and Dave out of Brantford, Connecticut. This one's got kind of a greenish tint to it. Excellent view of the comet from Connecticut. James out of Minnesota. Here's another view of the, the very large comet. And again, there's more to this tail than you can see in this photo. This is just what the camera was able to pull in. The, the tail was much bigger than that right there. Here's another view of the comet by Aaron Sutherland. Not sure of the location, but there's two more excellent examples of the, the comet visible basically in a daytime sky. And this one here looks like it was taken slightly after dark as the, the sun had dipped down down a little lower below the horizon. But once again, there's the, the solar storm of October 30th of 2003, much stronger than the one that we just saw here in 2024. Thanks for the excellent photos, guys. Really appreciate that. Keep them coming. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. If you guys have any videos you'd like to share that are too large to attach to the email, come over here to the homepage of the website where there's Two more awesome photos of the comet sent in by Stephen Adams from right out here in Arizona. Click on this red banner that says, have a large video. It's a Dropbox. Drag and drop your pictures and videos in the Dropbox. Please include your first name, date, and location, and I'll take it from there. Thanks for watching. Have a super day, and be safe out there.